Were you aware that there is a patron saint of metalsmiths and coin collectors? Neither was I until I stumbled across the fact on the website of the Intaglio Mint. In fact, the Intaglio Mint has created a silver round to honor that saint, Saint Allegius. Today we're going to take a look at the history of that saint, and then we're going to take a look at the St. Allegius Silver Round from Intaglio Mint. I have two of those rounds. Uh, there, I took a photograph of them. The photograph is on the screen there, so you could get a nice close-up detailed view. Uh, and then uh, towards the end of the video, I'll get them out on the table, and we'll do a, kind of a, a pseudo live shot uh, as I walk you through some of the details on those rounds. On the screen, uh, you see an image of him on the left, and then uh, some of the key roles that he had in life. As a younger man, he won fame as a very skilled and talented metalsmith. Uh, he rose in influence and power uh, to become a very uh, important and trusted counselor to the king. And then later in life, he was uh, consecrated a priest and bishop, and after his death, uh, was named a saint and became the patron saint of metalsmiths and numismatics, or if you will, coin collecting and coin collectors. Now, uh, looking at his earlier life, uh, Allegius was born in 590 AD in Limoges, France. He apprenticed uh, when he was young to a goldsmith, and it became evident very quickly that he had a real special talent uh, in that field. Uh, and he rose up and became master of the mint uh, for King Clotaire. As his fame and wealth grew, uh, he devoted himself to assisting the poor, to ransoming captives, to funding churches and monasteries. He ended up giving away a lot of his wealth. And then after Clotaire, when the new king came to power, King Dagobert, Allegius was appointed a counselor. Uh, a trusted counselor uh, to the new king. Now, in 640 AD, he became a priest and a bishop. Uh, he, had, he was a very religious man, had devoted a lot of his time to helping out uh, the people uh, in his area, in his society there, and he was appointed a priest and bishop. He was appointed bishop of Noyan and Turinai. He became uh, known as a very influential preacher who helped convert many to the Christian faith. Served as a priest and bishop for about six for about twenty years up until the, sorry six, sixty A.D. Uh, when he died. Okay. Uh, now uh, in the image here we have him in the uh, bishop's garb. Uh, he has the headpiece, which is known as a mitre. Uh, he has uh, the bishop's staff, which symbolizes their role as a shepherd of the people. He has a little hammer in his hand, which is interesting. I haven't been able to dig up anything on the symbolism of that, but perhaps it has something to do with his former role as a metalsmith. And it looks like there's a little crown on top of the hammer, so that's uh, pretty interesting as well. Perhaps for metalsmith to the king? Uh, I'm just speculating there. And so this is a, a very beautiful artwork uh, titled St. Allegius, Consecrated as Bishop. Uh, the artist was Pere Nunez. And it is uh, part of an altarpiece, which is a, uh, on an altar uh, in a church, and there's a series of different paintings. Uh, and this is one of them. Uh, and it was uh, basically uh, created uh, for the Silversmiths Guild uh, in the Church of La Merce in Barcelona. Uh, so just a very, a very beautiful uh, piece there. Uh, and then finally, after his death, he uh, was designated as a saint, uh, he became the patron saint of metalsmiths and coin collectors. His feast day, December 1st, uh, on uh, the calendar, on the Catholic Church calendar. Uh, so that's the day that he, his uh, contributions are commemorated uh, and honored. Uh, and in the little article I came across, uh, which was providing some of the details of his life, uh, they had a very nice little note uh, on his legacy. And it said, quote, the use of one's talents and wealth for the welfare of humanity is a very true reflection of the image of God. In the case of St. Allegius, he was so well liked that he attracted many to Christ. His example should encourage us to be generous in spirit 
and kind and happy in demeanor, unquote. Uh, so I thought that was a, a very nice thought there and a very nice uh, tribute to Allegis, who, uh, although he became very well-known, very famous, uh, became uh, wealthy, uh, he did uh, devote a lot of his energy and resources uh, to helping uh, the less fortunate. So that, that's probably a, a real nice lesson for all of us there. So uh, let's switch gears. I'm going to put the, the two silver rounds out on the table, and we'll take a look at some of the details on those rounds uh, and what, the, what symbolism is involved. Let's take a look at uh, this St. Allegis silver round. It's produced by the Intaglio Mint. It's a two-ounce silver round, and it is a limited edition. Only 500 of them were minted, and I have two of those 500 on the table right here. Uh, I went on to eBay uh, to get them. It was the only place I could find them. Oh, there was only one seller. He was selling two of them, and they had uh, a quite a steep premium on them, uh, but I decided to go ahead and take the plunge uh, and buy both of the rounds uh, simply because I love these rounds so much. Uh, the detail... Uh, the symbolism, all that sort of thing. So let's take a look, okay? So first off, uh, we have uh, the front side. Uh, and as you can see, it has St. Allegis in a workshop. Now, this is a kind of a conglomeration, maybe is the word, uh, of various things here. Uh, so he's in a workshop. You can see a, a coin press there on our left side of the coin. Uh, he's got some of the implements of the trade on the table on the right. Uh, he's also uh, wearing a bishop's miter. Uh, so this is a combination uh, uh, of various aspects of his life. Uh, he was working in the mint before he became a bishop. Uh, there's, I, I haven't seen anything that said he did so afterwards. Also, uh, the Intaglio website does note uh, that some of the equipment on here uh, is uh, equipment that came from a little bit of a later date. Uh, so they took uh, some artistic license, uh, but nevertheless, I see. I think it's just a, a really beautiful uh, round. Uh, you can see it says uh, Saint um, Allegius, uh, patron saint of uh, numismatics. You can see uh, in the background, there's a doorway to the outside. Uh, just a, a very beautiful sheen to the coin, beautiful detail. Uh, just uh, really, really impressive. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, this just might be uh, the favorite, my favorite silver round that I've come across. When we look at the reverse side, uh, the reverse side here is absolutely fascinating. Okay, uh, you've got a series uh, of coins represented, uh, historic coins uh, that are well known uh, for those who are familiar with the history of coins. Uh, in the center, you have the Intaglio logo, which is an eye uh, kind of in the design of like a Roman column. And then if you start at the very top, uh, you have an image there uh, that looks uh, a little bit like a line. OK, uh, not sure how good the focus is here. And um, the Intaglio website, the description of this round notes uh, that uh, this is a representation of a coin. Uh, known as the Lydian line, and it's considered to be uh, the oldest coin, or at least the oldest known coin uh, that has been created in human history. Um, and then if you move to the right, kind of going clockwise to about the two o'clock position there, uh, you can see uh, this is called uh, the Chinese cash coin, uh, which was cast in medieval Asia. Uh, and then the third coin, which is maybe about the four o'clock position, uh, is the Byzantine Solidus, uh, which uh, was uh, a popular money or a well-known money that was used after the fall of the Western Roman Empire. Uh, so when power shifted to Eastern Europe and the Byzantine Empire. And then if you go to the bottom, you have uh, the pillar, the pillar dollar or the pilar dollar. Uh, it's a Spanish coin was widely used in many countries, uh, became a, basically an international currency. Many consider it perhaps the first international currency. Uh, and uh, so that's represented there in very fine detail. And then uh, if you move to what would be about the eight o'clock position, uh, you have the British gold sovereign, 
with uh, St. George there uh, fighting the dragon. So hopefully we're getting a decent look at that there. Okay. Um, and then finally, in about the 10 o'clock position, uh, you have the Mercury Dime, which, uh, at least in Taglio, is claiming uh, is one of uh, the great coin designs of all time. Uh, the Winged Liberty, uh, technically speaking, but more popularly known as uh, the Mercury Dime. Uh, so I think this is just a, a fabulous concept here uh, to have the patron saint of coin collecting, of numismatics, of metalsmiths on one side, and then on the back side to represent uh, some of the famed coins uh, from history. Uh, so what a neat idea that is. Uh, so this coin, uh, I just, this coin, this round, uh, I'm just, I, I just love it. It's, it's just really amazing. And this is probably, uh, when it comes to routine silver rounds, uh, the most prized possession uh, that I have uh, in my stack. So let's go back and let you get one last look here at this. Okay. Uh, so, uh, sorry, the Intaglio Mint. Uh, I love the Intaglio Mint. They pr produce all kinds of neat and interesting things with different topics. If you're not familiar with them, you might want to go ahead and check out some of the stuff they have out there. Uh, I could be wrong, but I don't, I don't think they sell directly uh, to the individual customer. Uh, so you might have to get their stuff through a dealer or some sort of another seller. Uh, but that would be something you'd want to check up on just to make sure I'm correct on that. Uh, so uh, thank you for uh, watching and tuning in. Uh, appreciate you coming along the journey with me here. And uh, best wishes. And as always, uh, if you could go ahead and subscribe and uh, like and comment, uh, that would be much appreciated. Until next time, so long.